One of the key elements in almost every open world game is how lively the world looks and feels. Game developers usually have a tough time achieving that, and things become even more challenging if their open world game is set in a city. That's because not only does the game have to calculate the things going on in the city, such as the traffic system, animals and birds, if they exist in that game of course, day and night and weather cycles and the interactable environments, but also has to calculate NPCs and their reactions to every possible system and element, including the player. Now, while there are amazing open world games such as Red Dead Redemption 2 that took the open world simulation to another level, a couple of years before its release, in 2016 Ubisoft released Watch Dogs 2, a game that is equally loved and hated by many players. Compared to its predecessor, there are lots of things that Watch Dogs 2 got wrong, including the story, characters, gunplay and more. However, one of the things that stood out the most, and still is interesting to this day, is its NPC system. But what exactly makes Watch Dogs 2's NPCs special? Firstly, to avoid any confusion, by NPCs I don't mean the quest givers or the ones related to the story segment, but I'm rather talking about the ones roaming the open world. As to what makes them special, however, it mostly comes down to the NPC simulation in Watch Dogs 2 and some of the related systems which I will explain as we progress. Normally in the older open world games, where the processing power of their targeted hardware was more limited, especially compared to the last two console generations, the NPCs would appear as generic characters moving around in circles and not doing anything special in most cases, with a few exceptions here and there. But as the technology progressed, these worlds started to become more and more complex and the NPC systems evolved with them as well. In Watch Dogs 2, you can interact with everyone. Man, some weirdo came up to me and asked if this was the South Park where they filmed the TV show. I and said, no, by interaction, I don't necessarily mean that you can run them over or beat them to a pulp, which is possible, of course. But what I mean is an actual interaction via a specific prompt menu. We can look at it like performing any sort of emotes in an online game in front of other players, but instead you're doing it against offline and CPU controlled characters. And the crazy part is that these NPCs would react to your actions based on their current mood and characteristics. You're gonna start dancing in front of the NPCs and they might react by either mocking you or enjoying what you're doing. You can insult them and depending on the sort of character they are, they might start fighting back. Then if you show them your iron, again depending on the type of character they are, they might flee the scene or pull their own iron at you. But there are other ways of pacifying these tense situations, since you don't always need to show them who's the boss and by that I mean there is a prompt to ask them to chill out and they might actually control themselves and say something different to your response and get back to whatever it was they were doing before but of course you can continue to mock them and they'll react differently every time you see since we play as a dead sick hacker we have access to tools such as profiler now one of the things the profiler does is to show us the information about basically any NPC we want by hacking through the CTOS database. This way we can gain access to info such as an NPC's yearly income, profession, criminal activity and even their current mood. This system gives more depth, purpose and personality to each and every NPC you come across and you see them more than a meatbag walking down the street waiting for you to do some horrible stuff to them. Not that I do any of that anyway. Man, the folk can't really escape the allegations now, can you? Have you ever wanted to listen to what complete strangers are talking about on their phones? And your feet smell. If you make me go, I'm gonna take my shoes off and make everyone smell my feet. Great. Pick you up an hour before. No, wait, what? Well, neither do I. Hopefully that was your answer. But you can do that in this game to prove a point to the people that their privacy has been breached and that they aren't safe because you can easily tap into their phone calls or worse, read their text messages and learn all about them without them ever finding out. You can even steal their money by hacking their bank account or overheating their phones with a single click of a button and well, knock them out in the process. That is unless the paramedics come around and wake the person up by uh, doing this. Trust me, I'm a professional. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly how doctors work. But the most important thing is that everyone reacts to all of these actions differently. And the reactions come with their specific kind of voice acting and character animation as well. This shows the insane amount of attention to detail this game has. But messing with armless NPCs is not the only thing you can do in this game. See, it's possible to call a hit squad or even police force on NPCs. Now, depending on the region you're currently at, the hit squad or should I say the gang members might change. You can put a hit order on different gang members and cause them to go to war against each other and to make it even more interesting, calling the police force against them would cause an all-out war against the involved factions. However, there are other ways to occupy yourself with these characters as well. For example, piss an NPC off and let them attack you first. Then, if there are any police patrols nearby, they might arrest the person and if there aren't any, maybe someone calls the police or better, get involved themselves and protect you which would cause the NPCs to engage in a unique fight between themselves or maybe they manage to pacify one another. Although, you don't necessarily have to be the one causing the situations, since NPCs can engage in different activities among themselves without the player's interference. Now you don't always need to directly hack an NPC's phone since you can hack the city infrastructure and cause chaos in the streets. You know, doing so would affect their daily routine, cause massive traffic that would make them go mad and so on. The best thing about messing with these characters is that it's not always a one-way relation. They can also be the ones interacting with you, commenting on what you're doing, attacking you and more. This stuff, in general, makes the world of Watch Dogs 2 San Francisco much more believable compared to many open world games, and as a result, it's actually quite fun to spend time in its universe. The AI in this game is not the best in class, even compared to the games released then. It has its fair share of problems, like the enemies becoming aware of your position immediately after one of them notices you, or sometimes the NPCs might forget what they were doing. But the tools at your disposal make the overall experience so fun that in my opinion it's on par with the level of fun found in open world experience of GTA games. Regardless, it's the NPCs and the endless possibilities found within the free roam of Watch Dogs 2 that make it an enjoyable video game. Although there are other amazing factors found within this game that make it a memorable experience, but the NPCs are just something else. It's a shame to see what happened to the Watch Dogs series, especially with Ubisoft pulling the plug on the franchise after Watch Dogs Legion's failure. So for the time being, there's not going to be another Watch Dogs game around. But you can check this video instead and see how Ubisoft tried improving the NPC system from Watch Dogs 2 into a unique mechanic in Watch Dogs Legion. And spoiler alert, they might have bitten off more than they could chew with this one. But hey, don't judge me too harshly on that video, since it was the very first video I've ever edited. 